I want to welcome Steve Penny, whose free report you can find at silverchartersnation.com. He correctly predicted the uranium bull run and is doing extremely well in that space. But now he's helping investors find other undervalued assets that they can get in early. Welcome, Steve. Elliot, thank you so much for inviting me back. It's always fun to speak with you and connect with your audience. So thanks. So yeah, you correctly predicted uranium. It's had this big move up. What are you doing now? What are your thoughts about it as a whole? Yeah, I still I still think there's plenty of room to run in the uranium sector. Um, the spot price is still in the mid 40s, and you know we're probably going to need to see at least 65 dollar uranium to to even uh, begin to incentivize the new production that's needed to meet this growing global demand. So that in between 45 and 65 dollar uranium, you know th- there's a lot of money to be made in these small small cap stocks. So there's a lot of room upside, and from a technical perspective. The, the spot uranium price or the futures price, my next target is about $73 uranium once we break through the recent high of 50. So plenty of room to run in uranium. Um, I w- but that said, it's a volatile sector. So we don't want to chase. I like to say, uh, buy the dips, hold the rips. So when we see these rips up like this, you know, let's just hold. We don't have to chase. Yeah, that's the advice you gave last time. And it was totally spot on because I think you came on and the price had just, you know, it was hockey stick. And you're like, just wait, wait till it dips. Then it did dip, and that was a perfect buying opportunity. So you're extremely bullish on it. I mean, up to seventy-three dollars. That would mean major gains in uranium miners. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> there's um, I can't remember who said it. It's probably one of the guests you've had on, but said something like, uh, when there's a delta or a gap between price and value, that's oppor- that's where opportunity lies. And you know, we don't want to buy stocks when the the fundamental proposition, value proposition, is already fully priced in. That's not an opportunity. We want to wait till the price pulls back, but that value is still there. That's where the opportunity lies. Yeah, absolutely. And this whole narrative behind the bull market was kind of there's going to be this supply crunch, and you know demand is going to pick up, and supply will be you know won't be able to accommodate that, and we'll have this squeeze. And similar to 2007, it'll like be a pump and then maybe a quick crash down. But have you been following some of the developments in uranium? It's like. It could not be more bullish. Now we have the big money, big governments all supporting it. Yep. It, it's the, the thesis was so wildly bullish a year ago, and it's only gotten even more bullish. Um, and you know, as I think most of your listeners are probably contrarian investors, I'm a contrarian, but at some point, if you want to capture the majority of gains in a bull market, you have to kind of switch your mindset from contrarian mindset to more of like a trend. You want to ride that momentum. Because if you keep the contrarian mindset in a long-term bull market, you know, you'll know you get shaken loose too early. One company I've seen kind of in your universe, and I wanted to ask you about it because I don't know much about it personally, but Uranium Royalty Core, that's mm-hmm. one that is a, is a royalty model. You know, in precious metals, there's lots of those companies that just do the royalty model, low overhead, but just major exposure to any upside in the price. So I was interested to see kind of you talk about that company. Could you just let us know a little bit about that one in particular? Sure. And, um, you know, you and I were talking beforehand, typically out of respect for the members, you know, I don't talk about stocks, but this one's relatively, it's, you know, it's got a larger market cap. Um, So we we can talk about that one a little bit. It's the only royalty play in the uranium space. So right there, it's got, you know, first mover advantage. And what's interesting, what I personally like about that one is they've got a royalty agreement uh, with Cameco on MacArthur River. So when MacArthur River eventually comes back online, that, that could be perceived as a short-term headwind, you know, for, for the sector. Um, although the you know the, the demand is going to quickly overwhelm that new supply, but for the very short term, that could be perceived. So Uranium Royalty Core has a royalty on that specific mine. So it's almost like a hedge against that future production that could come online because that will benefit Uranium Royalty Core. That's just one reason I like it. And that's just one of their royalties. They probably have so many royalties. Oh, yeah on so many different projects. And as these mines come online, because demand is just taking off and skyrocketing and the price skyrockets, royalty companies should do extremely well. Yeah, exactly. You know, one thing to consider with that specific one is, you know, um, will the bull market be over before a lot of these mining stocks (laughs) bring their, bring their production online? Mm -hmm. Um, So, so, you know, there's always two sides, but you know, that's, that is one stock I like. So as far as like kind of your long-term plan with uranium, are you just, because the fundamentals are so great, I mean, do you have a long-term horizon on how long you want to hold it? I guess time-wise, no, but uh, price-wise, yes. Um, so personally, you know, even though I think it's, we're 
I think we're very, very likely to see triple digit uranium. Mm-hmm. Um, that doesn't mean I'm going to hold all of my mining stocks until then. So I've got a you know detailed exit strategy where I'll be scaling out into strength. And that's more about risk management. So just taking a little bit off the table as the bull market matures. That makes a lot of sense. And you know, I think why people love following you is because you love buying things when no one else wants it. I don't know how you just turn your brain off and all your emotions off and just and just buy like deep, you know, in deep fear mode, but you do and you find really undervalued assets. So yeah, uranium's done well. That's great. You're looking for other undervalued assets constantly for your investors that follow you. So what are you looking at now that could be early stage and undervalued? Yeah. And your listeners know, I mean, our business is silver chartist. So silver is my primary focus. That said, I'm always on the lookout for other undervalued assets. And right now, platinum has my attention. Uh, platinum, the, the more research I do into platinum, the more bullish I become uh, on a fundamental basis, on a technical basis. I think platinum could have some explosive moves in the years ahead. Yeah. So what is kind of the basis for your thesis on platinum? And why do you think it's like more undervalued than let's say gold or silver stocks? On a fundamental basis, it remind, platinum reminds me a lot of uranium. In 2011, we had the Fukushima disaster and the world swore off nuclear. Everyone hated it. Well, in the last few years, you know, the primary industrial use for platinum is in diesel catalytic converters. They can be used in you know, regular internal combustion engines too. But um, you know, the world kind of said, hey, we're not doing diesel anymore. Um, and now you've got the rise of electric vehicles, which don't have catalytic converters. So the world's saying, oh, we don't need platinum. And I think that accounts for its underperformance over the last few years. It's just beaten down to a pulp. And on a uh, ratio basis, you know, platinum, platinum throughout history is almost always traded at a premium to gold. And not just a little premium, but a, a wide premium. Well, right now, platinum's down around 1,000 and we've got gold up at 1,800. This is a, a historic anomaly that we haven't seen in, I, I don't know if I can say ever, because I haven't gone back millennia or centuries, but certainly in the last hundred years, Platinum has never been so undervalued relative to gold and even silver on a ratio basis. Now, I think silver presents a much more favorable risk reward because you know platinum has a very large industrial component. So in a big recession or you know worse, platinum could get hit, but um, it, it's certainly worth a speculative position right here, right now. Yeah, absolutely. And if you're bullish, you know, precious metals long term because of this insane inflation and and you, mm-hmm. you know, you're invested in gold, then generally platinum. Platinum tends to follow gold and silver, right? It's like buying kind of like a, um, you know, maybe not the Apple stock, but some other sort of tech stock or penny stock that just goes outperforms like the big dog, right? Yeah, it, it, it does. It tends to lead the, the precious metals and it tends to outperform them on, you know, bull markets and underperform greatly in bear markets. And what's interesting is there's four primary demand drivers for platinum. And those are automotive, industrial, jewelry, and then investment demand. And platinum is about 30 times more rare than gold. So it's, it's a tiny, tiny market cap. And um, you know, roughly 18 to 20% of that demand comes from investment. Well, it's, it's such a small number of people invest in platinum. You know, if you were to double that, it wouldn't be much. And that would throw the supply-demand fundamentals even further out of whack. And another bullish fundamental with platinum is the, this uh, push towards hydrogen, the hydrogen economy, these hydrogen fuel cells. We see big automakers like Hyundai and, and several others moving in that direction. And hydrogen fuel cell cars use, um, I want to say two times, it's, it's a lot more platinum than you know diesel cars. Wow. Yeah. I know there is kind of this serious kind of bubble in these, in these hydrogen mm-hmm. stocks and things like that. So, And there's, there's a lot of investment in it too. So mm-hmm. that's a great use case for platinum. Mm-hmm. So no, it's really interesting because if you're bullish gold, then then why not think about platinum if it's going to outperform gold if gold yeah. goes up, right? One, one, one more point I can, I'll make here about platinum, and I don't think the market is fully pricing this in, and that's the substitution effect. Platinum can be used in auto, catalytic converters you know, just like palladium. So palladium right now is trading at a premium to platinum as well, which is a historic anomaly. So a lot of these auto manufacturers are starting to you know, substitute platinum for palladium. And we just saw, was it uh, the first quarter of this year? Uh, don't quote me on this, but China has its palladium imports dropped by almost 46% while their platinum imports were like at a record for the quarter. So that's a very strong sign, early sign that a, a lot of these automakers are going to start to substitute platinum for palladium. And I don't think the market is accounting for that. 
No, I absolutely love that as a deep value uh, proposition. So have you looked at it as a ratio to gold and silver? You know, as a technical analyst, what do you see? Oh, there? yeah. I, I love ratio charts and I feel like a picture can be worth a thousand words. So I won't go through all these charts, but this is a chart just showing how undervalued commodities in general are relative to general equities. And, you know, we haven't seen this, uh, you know, commodities so undervalued in pro- probably close to a hundred years. So tons of value there. So that makes me think, well, let's drill down. Let's find the most undervalued commodities. And when you come here and look at platinum versus gold, you can see platinum is way undervalued versus gold. And on a technical pattern here, you know, we're, we're approaching the apex of this triangle pattern after we broke out right above this downtrend line. So I think platinum is very likely to begin outperforming gold. And then this one is pretty surprising. And this, I think this will surprise a lot of your uh, viewers. Look, look at the platinum to silver ratio. This goes back to two, the year 2000. And platinum had at one point traded to 150 to one ratio with silver. That was a historic extreme. Well, now we're at the opposite extreme. Now, if that reverts to back where we were, 151, platinum would outperform even silver by a wide margin. Now, like I said, you know, that doesn't mean, hey, we get rid of our silver and go into platinum because it's a riskier, it's a big uh, industrial demand component where, you know, silver is money and we're heading into a currency crisis. But at the same time, platinum, I mean, this, this risk reward ratio here, I, I, I'm increasing my exposure to platinum aggressively. And what's interesting about platinum is there, there's only... I could count on one hand the amount of quality stocks that are worth investing in. Um, and we just did a special report on two of them in our, our weekend report. But yeah, pl- platinum, a compelling opportunity here for sure. Yeah, no, that's a big question. Like how can investors get exposure to platinum? Mm-hmm. And you did a report on it so they could just sign up and see that, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, out of respect for our paying members, I'm, I'm not going to mention the names because there's only a couple of pl- quality platinum stocks out there. Right now, definitely going to be looking forward to that. So silver is undervalued. So if you're saying platinum historically is is undervalued, even compared to silver, then there's just a serious potential there. And uh, we'll definitely be interested in that. You kind of talked about your uranium strategy. Platinum seems to be a, a good option, but is there anything else kind of in your kind of psychology around like how you're investing today? Over the short to intermediate term here, um, while I'm wildly bullish on these metals we, we've just talked about, silver, uranium, gold, platinum, you know, you always, we can't just be blind to the, there's always two sides, you know, there's bulls and bears, and we want to know the bear case in multiple time frames. So I'm always looking at that as well. And there's, it's rare that you get everything to line up perfectly where you're like, oh, this is perfect setup here. So kind of the, the fly in the ointment right now, the, the commitment of traders report specifically for gold. I mean, it's not quite super bearish yet, but it's 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 not consistent with like what you want to see. Put it that way: these bankers are are still sh- heavily short gold and silver to a certain extent, and they've been shorting the rally. That's not what we want to see. I met uh, Jim Sinclair a handful of years ago, and one thing he said that really stuck with me is when when the metals go and they do their full accounting for the expansion of debt based currency, the bankers are going to be on the right side of that. And the clearest way to look at that is the commitment of traders report. Now, could they just manipulate the COT and maybe they're actually long? Um, we, we know they're buying physical. So, you know, it's not like saying, hey, this is a clear sell signal. It's just something worthy of note. Well, I just had Andy Schechtman of Miles Franklin on and he was telling me how one trading group, like so pretty much one trader committed $4 billion. Mm-hmm. They, they did a $4 billion buy to gold and, uh, it, just, it, it does seem like that's a whale and they have serious, serious money. Exactly. And, and you know, Andy's, he's, he's an expert in really all things precious metals. But, you know, we need to make that distinction for those of you, your listeners who may not be familiar. You know, the price we look at is set in, on the COMEX and it's based on supply and demand of paper contracts that can be uh, issued at will. So, you know, some, some whale comes in and buys a bunch of physical that doesn't necessarily affect the paper price right away. Eventually, you know, the fundamentals will do a full accounting. It just, uh, you know, over the very short term. Absolutely great. And so just one thing I want to end on is kind of the macro picture and kind of your philosophy on investing. So let's just say that this bull, that, you know, this Federal Reserve manipulated stock market bubble decides to just take, do a melt up, right? And just mm-hmm. crypto and tech and everything into year end just goes up exponentially, maybe even like a 1x move. Gold and silver, like in the 2000 tech bubble, dip? Like, how are you going to approach that type of kind of worst case scenario for commodities investors? Um, yeah, that's a really good question. And that's something I track closely. I've actually got a chart here uh, showing the gold to Dow ratio. 
And we really need as precious metals investors to see gold start to outperform general equities. And we're seeing some early signs that perhaps that's happening um, because that that's what's going to tr- attract those generalist investors. Hey, I can be making more money in gold. There's opportunity costs to owning stocks. Um, but you're saying, what if it goes the other way? Um, well, with precious metals, my physical, I look at that as insurance policy. So it doesn't really bother me, even if the price goes down. With the mining stocks, um, you know, this is a scenario I really don't see happening. But um, you know, I, that's where I think position sizing is so important because if you're all in on silver and gold mining stocks, and you know, this all takes longer to unfold, that's going to be a painful time to wait. And it's really good to know you don't see that happening, right? So, I don't. Yep. No, I don't. Right. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Where can people go to keep on top of these updates and learn more from you? Yeah, you bet. So we do a free letter that goes out every Sunday and the goal is to provide a ton of value for free. We don't spam you or hit you with high pressure sales or anything like that. And the place to go get that is silverchartistnation.com. By the way, that's a link just for your listeners, silverchartistnation.com. And then there is the option to upgrade to a low ticket premium plan if you choose to, but there's never any pressure to do that. This discussion is for informational purposes only. Nothing in this discussion should be taken as investment advice. Guests are not compensated for their appearance. Do not base any investment decisions on the information presented.